Dr. Akbar Khan from uh, Medicore Cancer Centers joining us right now. Good morning, doctor. Thanks for coming in. Good morning, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Okay, so your reaction, first of all, to this, uh, the, the rare form of this cancer, they had to do two different biopsies. Yes, that's correct. And uh, this, is this unusual? Uh, it's, it's not unusual, but uh, it does happen if you have a cancer where um, it's aggressive to the point that it grows very quickly and part of the cancer uh, dies on its own because it grows faster than it can grow its own new arteries and veins. So it can't actually feed itself. Um, and then if you take a sample from the part that's died, you're not going to get a diagnosis. All you have is a mess. So then they had to take another sample, uh, as described by Dr. Cohen, um, from a part of the cancer that was alive, and then they were able to make the diagnosis. Liposarcoma. Yes. Uh, sounds like a big word, but in the medical profession, everything means something. So what is liposarcoma? Okay, so lipo means fat, and so that's um, where the tumor originated from, one of the fat cells. And uh, sarcoma is a soft tissue cancer. So what that means is it arises from organs such as uh, muscles, bones, uh, blood vessels, fat, or other connective tissues in the body. Um, so that, that's basically what it means. So what is he in for? We, we hear three days of chemo. We hear 18 days of uh, sort of washing out and then another three days of chemo. What, right. what is a patient like that in for? Okay, so they didn't really specify which, which chemo he's getting. I mean, we can speculate. Um, one of the standard chemo regimens for sarcoma is a, a three-day chemo. Um, and for that particular drug, uh, what we're probably looking at is um, uh, the, the, at least the most common side effects would be lowering of the blood cell counts, uh, possibly nausea, vomiting, uh, maybe hair loss, um, and, you know, immune suppression, uh, that type of thing. Uh, one of the questions was asked yesterday, at this point, should he be doing something as strenuous as running for a council seat? Although I don't know if he's going to have to put a lot into that. Or how do you cut down on that stress? Uh, for Rob, you mean? Yeah. Well, I, I think, um, you know, at least right now, um, he has to focus on getting better, and I'm sure he will, and I uh, wish him all the best. And uh, certainly stress reduction, I think, is important, especially when you're going through a difficult, uh, a difficult treatment like a chemotherapy. Um, but only he's really the one to judge whether that's going to be good for him or bad for him. Yeah, I think, I think when you, if you know Rob Ford, sometimes working hard is probably his best stress reduction, Exactly, and sometimes good therapy, so and, and uh, I think it's it, a distraction as well. Yeah, and um, now people start to think, okay, what about me? Uh, he complained of pain in his side for a couple of months. Right. And people are saying, well, if he'd gone a few months ago, it would have made all the difference in the world. How do we know when we should be concerned about something? Well, that's really difficult because there's so many causes of, of abdominal pain, and uh, cancer is actually down the list. It's not one of the most common things. Um, in fact, in his case, I think he was fortunate because he did have pain. And sometimes you don't have pain. It doesn't tip you off until it's really too late, and, and the tumor could have been massive. So he was very lucky. Um, so your question is, you know, how do you know? Um, it's very difficult. The best thing really is if you have some kind of unusual symptoms, you really need to consult with your doctor. The, uh, what people, a lot of people don't know is Toronto is one of the leading cancer research centers anywhere. Uh, and, and I mean, for instance, the, uh, the Medicare Cancer Centers. So tell me a little bit about that, that their, your work. Yeah, so, um, so we founded this center in uh, 2006. Uh, it's a private clinic and our focus at the time was to help people get better treatments for their cancer um, things that were not available within the, the health system under OHIP. And since then, we've kind of changed our focus, and now we're doing a lot of non-traditional treatments. And that really involves a lot of uh, medications and therapies that are still in research stages, but have shown great promise. And um, for difficult cancers like this, this is kind of what we specialize in. And our, our view is that um, you need to do more than just the traditional treatments. I, and as soon as you started saying that, I bet you there were, are lots of, because I don't know of a person who has not been in some way touched by cancer, in, yes. in some way, shape, or form. They want to get in touch with you now. So how, how would they go about doing that? Uh, well, probably the easiest thing is just through the website. They can go on um, www.medicorecancer.com, or if you just type Medicor and cancer in any search engine, will come up. Okay. All right. Very interesting. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, let's go upstairs, check on traffic. It's been a really busy one on the roads and on the subways this morning, Russ. Yeah.